the Second Amendment to the Constitution. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. 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 The Founding Fathers agree. Armed citizens make good government. I ask, sir, what is the militia? It is the whole people. Who is the militia? Are they not ourselves? To disarm the people? That is the best and most effective way to enslave them. George Mason. Congress have no power to disarm the militia. Their swords and every other terrible implement of the soldier are the birthright of an American. Tench Cox, 1788. The Constitution preserves the advantage of being armed which Americans possess over the people of almost every other nation, where the governments are afraid to trust the people with arms. James Madison, Federalist, number 46. A free people ought not only to be armed and disciplined, but they should have sufficient arms and ammunition to maintain a status of independence from any who might attempt to abuse them, which would include their own government. George Washington. The Founding Fathers created the Bill of Rights, enshrined individual protections, including the Second Amendment, because they understood that power inherently corrupts. The Bill of Rights was set up to try to discourage bad behavior from government, try to further restrain it, and try to head off what they knew would eventually become misinterpretations of the law and attempts to misconstrue the intent of the Founders. But their quotes here could not be more clear. If the representatives of the people betray their constituents, there is then no recourse left but in the exertion of that original right of self-defense, which is paramount to all positive forms of government. Alexander Hamilton, the Federalist, number 28. Are we at last brought to such a humiliating and debasing degradation that we cannot be trusted with arms for our own defense? Patrick Henry. The Constitution shall never be construed to authorize Congress to prevent the people of the United States, who are peaceable citizens, from keeping their own arms. Samuel Adams. The right of citizens to bear arms is just one more guarantee against arbitrary government, one more safeguard against the tyranny which now appears remote in America, but which historically has proved to be always possible. Hubert Humphrey, 1960. When governments fear the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. The strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect themselves against tyranny and government. Thomas Jefferson. The best we can hope for concerning the people at large is that they be properly armed. Alexander Hamilton. The very atmosphere of firearms anywhere and everywhere restrains evil interference. They deserve a place of honor with all that is good. George Washington. Arms discourage and keep the invader and plunderer in awe and preserve order in the world as well as property. Horrid mischief would ensue were the law-abiding deprived of the use of them. Thomas Paine. To preserve liberty, it is essential that the whole body of the people always possess arms and be taught alike, especially when young, how to use them. Richard Henry Lee, 1778. A free people claim their rights as derived from the laws of nature and not as a gift of their chief magistrate, Thomas Jefferson. Our Second Amendment, our free speech are gifts from God, but the fact that they were pointed out, highlighted, enumerated, and strengthened in the Bill of Rights and Constitution is our birthright. You don't have to like guns. You don't have to like the Second Amendment to fight for it, to stand up for it. If we let it slip away, we're going to lose everything from free speech on down. That light will be dimmed if we allow them to encroach on the Second Amendment. Guard with jealous attention the public liberty. Suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. Unfortunately, nothing will preserve it but downright force. Wherever you give up that force, you are ruined. The great object is that every man be armed. Everyone who is able might have a gun. Patrick Henry. Dictators and disarmed populations go together. The most foolish mistake we can possibly make would be to allow the subject races to possess arms. History shows that all conquerors who have allowed their subject races to carry arms have prepared their own downfall by doing so. Adolf Hitler, April 1942. Before a standing army can rule, the people must be disarmed, as they are in almost every kingdom in Europe. Noah Webster. Death solves all problems. No man, 
No problem. Joseph Stalin. In earlier times, it was easier to control one million people than to physically kill one million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill one million people than to control one million people. Zygmunt Brzezinski. If the opposition disarms, well and good. If it refuses to disarm, we shall disarm it ourselves. Joseph Stalin. One death is a tragedy. One million is a statistic. Joseph Stalin. To disarm the people is the best and most effective way to enslave them. George Mason. And tyranny always follows disarmed populations. It's the history of democide. It's what naturally happens when power is too concentrated in one man, in one centralized government, in one tyrannical system, as we now see worldwide. We were supposed to set up checks and balances in an attempt to create better government. Instead, we let our guard down and the corporations have taken over. It is the duty of the patriot to protect his country from its government. Thomas Paine. The supreme power in America cannot enforce unjust laws by the sword because the whole body of the people are armed. Noah Webster, 1787. Ideas are more powerful than guns. We would not let our enemies have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? Joseph Stalin. Those now possessing weapons and ammunition are at once to turn them over to the local police authority. Firearms and ammunition found in a Jew's possession will be forfeited to the government without compensation. Whoever willfully or negligently violates the provisions will be punished with imprisonment and a fine. Nazi law, regulations against Jews' possession of weapons, 1938. Political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Chairman Mao Zedong. The only real power comes out of a long rifle. Joseph Stalin. Those who beat their swords into plowshares usually end up plowing for those who didn't. Ben Franklin. If gun laws in fact worked, the sponsors of this type of legislation should have no difficulty drawing upon long lists of examples of crime rates reduced by such legislation. That they cannot do so after a century and a half of trying. That they must sweep under the rug the southern attempts at gun control in the 1870 to 1910 period, the northeastern attempts in the 1920 to 1939 period, the attempts at both federal and state levels in 1965 through 1976 establishes the repeated, complete, an inevitable failure of gun laws to control serious crime, or in Hatch, and the right to keep and bear arms. After a shooting spree, they always want to take guns away from the people who didn't do it. I sure as hell wouldn't want to live in a society where the only people allowed guns are the police and military. William S. Burroughs. They've undermined our economic system, they've instituted the Federal Reserve, they've bought out politicians, and now they're coming for the final restraint on their total power that is firearms, that is guns, that is the Second Amendment. And if you let them do it, they're going to encroach on our entire lives. If you want the right to control your own life, to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, you must politically stand up for the Second Amendment and say no to these attempts to use emotional strings, the images of dead children, to confiscate our firearms, to take away our rights, and to tell us that we're bad for trying to keep and bear arms as the founders always outlined for us to do. The balance of power is the scale of peace. The same balance would be preserved were all the world destitute of arms, for all would be alike. But since some will not, others dare not lay them aside. Thomas Paine. July 1775. What country can preserve its liberties if the rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. Thomas Jefferson. If guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. Anonymous American adage. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A well-regulated militia composed of the people trained to arms is the best and most natural defense of a free country. James Madison, June 8th, 1789. Education is a weapon whose effects depend on who holds it in his hands and at whom it is aimed. Joseph Stalin. It's your decision. Choose freedom or tyranny. Demand they obey the Constitution. Honor and uphold the Constitution. Demand your natural inherent rights as a human being. Demand the Bill of Rights. You choose freedom or tyranny. Demand the restoration of the Republic. It's your decision. Freedom or tyranny. Those that give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Benjamin Franklin. 